top of the dresser. I mean, uh, can't, is there anything? Now, they have left family. They have left the United States of America. They have left the comfort uh, of a doctor's home. Uh, Bill's uh, uh, granddad was a Supreme Court Justice of the state of Texas. And they are living in the environment that, that Sally and I have traveled in over there in the common Chinese environment. Things here are going well. We have been so blessed by seeing two new girls recently come to know Christ. They're committed to studying the word with us and eager to grow in the work of the Lord. God, why haven't you been better to me? I want to tell you this morning as we enter into a Thanksgiving season. Not whether we're going to have a Thanksgiving or not, but whose home can we have it in and where can we enjoy this great abundance? Now, George Washington was the first president to call a day of Thanksgiving. James Madison was the second president to call a day of Thanksgiving. Abraham Lincoln was the one that established an annual day of Thanksgiving. Later it was changed, I believe, by uh, President Eisenhower. God bless America. God bless America from sea to shining sea. Thanksgiving, praise. What does it mean to be thankful? What does it mean to be grateful? Now whenever we actually stop and, and, and consider where God has brought us from, not Bill Gates, uh, 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 not the, uh, 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 some of the great men and women that have amassed a fortune, not the, uh, a lady that can spend $140 million running for a political office, uh, not people that have been abundantly rewarded. They, they're looking for something. November 11th. November 11th is next Thursday. And we're going to be having the Thanksgiving in here, God willing, I believe it's the 21st, in two weeks, two Sundays from today. Thanksgiving in there. I hope and pray to God that all over you here bring somebody with you. We have this place full because people love ham and, and, and chicken better than they do hearing me preach. And I don't blame them. Because unless you're interested, it's very difficult to sit and listen to somebody That's for true. 50 That's minutes true. to an hour. That's true. Unless you've got something invested, you can't hardly do it. You don't want to keep people bound to television, to soap operas. Uh, day after day, I have a friend uh, that cannot miss the soap operas. They tape them so that they can listen to them if they happen to be away. They have something invested. Why don't people want to come into the gospel of Jesus Christ? You haven't invested anything. If you've got an investment in something, you're going to protect it. You're going to see that it's preserved. You're going to see that it's taken care of. Yes. Amen. Amen. i got children and grandchildren that need to understand what America really is. They've never known what America really is. Great land of opportunity, an uh, opportunity to what? To get wealth. But more than that, an opportunity to understand where that wealth comes from. Yes. Sally and I were at a dinner the other night with educators. And the announcement from two of the leading educators of the financial part is that California is broke, we're not going to get any better off, and our education is now at the 50th level. Not only in California, but now worldwide, America is no longer able to educate our children. 
talked to two superintendents this week and four or five board members about the election. Well, if the parents were sending us better children, we could educate them. Is that right? I said, your certificate says that you are an educated educator. That you've got the ability to transfer the knowledge that you have over to those little children. And you've got the ability to inspire them to where that they'll make an investment in their own life. So if we don't have any investment, we're not concerned. We're only concerned about what we might lose and how we might gain something else. Child has an investment. Why don't they take better care of things? Why don't they take better care of our parks and our streets? You go to a, a, a park and try to go into one of the toilets uh, in, in the park. Uh, back in Lubbock, Texas, when I was a kid, the outhouses were taken better care of. Why? Because they don't have any investment. See, if they caught you back there, you had to go clean it for a certain length of time, and you had an investment. When you have to learn to pick up your own garbage, and you have to learn uh, how to take uh, and pay the penalty for your mistakes, yes. <laughs> that means you become responsible. Uh, we, we, we today won't teach our children responsibility. November the 11th, let me read one other thing to you. The service flag. Will you give a thought when passing by the home where his loved ones are? Will you murmur a prayer as you wind your way by the house with the lonely star? Will you help them along with a cheery song and send a line off or send a line off to the war? And just let him know that there's a warmth and glow in the house with the lonely star. Don't let him worry and don't let him fret. Call in, keep the front door ajar. Bring them a good word and don't ever forget there's a house with a lonely star. By a star, we are told in the days of old, a savior was found from afar. There may be a manger quite hidden away in the house with a lonely star. The poet William H. Barter. The house with the lonely star, there might be a manger in that star. There's no pride. Whenever we have a, a soldier that is paid to go and put themselves in harm's way and they come back, three-fourths of the homeless people, and there are millions of them in America today, three-fourths of them are veterans. I don't know about anything. It's mine. I got a right to it. I don't have any responsibility. Why should I come to church? I don't want to let that old man get up and holler after all. I mean, I'm a child or his grandchild or his friend that I've known him with. When you pass by the house with the lonely star, I remember when I was a kid peddling papers on the street corner, I was a real hellraiser. I didn't have any sense, didn't have any responsibility, didn't have any goal, didn't have any thing to motivate me except trouble. But I remember in the window in our house, there was a flag. And it was a star. It was a blue star. It said that Pete Montgomery, my brother, was serving in the United States Army. 